Have you ever wondered what happens when your cells get stressed? Who do you think the cells go for when they are stressed? What are the things which identifies that you know the cells are stressed? What are the genes activated? Yes, we will be learning all about these things. There is something called as integrated stress response. Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is Dr. Vijay Shankar, Professor of Pathology. I will be discussing a very important topic, a new topic which is published in the recent uh, textbook of Pathology by Robbins that is Integrated Stress Response. Okay. Before we talk about integrated stress response, we will talk about what really happens in the normal cell. Okay. We all know that normal cell stays in equilibrium state that is called as homeostasis. Whenever there is a stress to this particular cell, it tries to adapt. Okay, That is the first important response. It tries to adapt and we call that as cellular adaptation. Now, if the cells are not able to adapt for some reasons, then we say that the cell is injured. Now, that is what we refer to as cell injury. Okay, Now, if the injurious agent is mild, and transient, there is always a probability that this injury can be reversed and this is reversible cell injury. Okay, When the injurious agent is taken off, it can result back to normalcy. That is a normal thing. Now, if the injury is very severe and progressive, then what happens is that it results in irreversible injury. And there are two major forms of irreversible injury which are necrosis and apoptosis okay this is the whole life of cell okay now let us see what really happens when the cells are stressed we are talking about the adaptation principles right so this is what we call as integrated stress response now what is this integrated stress response it is the cell's emergency response system remember this is the emergency response system where there is network of intracellular signaling pathways which modulates the expression of various genes and protein synthesis. Okay, And all these expression of various genes and synthesis of proteins result or you know they are the ones needed for the cells to adapt for that particular stressful agent. Okay. So, this whole thing is referred to as integrated stress response. Now, let us learn what are the stressors, what causes stress to a particular cell. The stressors could be n number of uh, reasons which could be as simple as hypoxia or ischemia, could be because of infections, all kind of infections can result in stress. It could be even because of nutrient starvation, could be because of membrane damage or because of accumulation of damaged or misfolded proteins. All of these are stressors to the given cell. Now, once we have stress, we should also know how these stressful agents are identified. Now, what are the stress sensing kinases? Okay. Now, there are four important categories. One is protein kinase R, PKR, which senses endoplasmic reticulum stress. The second one is PKR-like ER kinase, which is also abbreviated as PERK. This detects amino acid shortage. The third category is general control non-derepressible 2 kinase, GCN2. These are activated by viral infections. And the fourth one is heme-regulated EIF2-alpha kinase, which are HRI, and this responds to iron deficiency. These are the four important categories of kinases which senses the stressful events. Okay. Now, what do these four kinases do? All of these, you know, they basically do one thing and that is phosphorylate this EIF2 alpha which is eukaryotic initiation factor 2 alpha. What do we mean by phosphorylation? which basically means adding a phosphate ion to this particular molecule, eukaryotic initiation factor 2 alpha. This is phosphorylated. Now, these kinases phosphorylate this particular factor. Now, what really happens if there is phosphorylation? Let us see what is a normal state. Okay, Normally, this E1F2 alpha is unphosphorylated. 
Now, what is the function of this unphosphorylated uh, factor? This is the state where the protein production switch is turned on. Okay, the unphosphorylated state is a condition is a state where the protein production is turned on whereas phosphorylation how do they how are they phosphorylated all those four stress sensing kinases right they phosphorylate the phosphorylated factor switches the flip you know and turns the protein production off which means there is no protein production right the protein synthesis on a whole comes down the global protein synthesis slows down which means there is an opportunity for an injured cell to conserve energy and to restore homeostasis. That is the reason why this factor has to be phosphorylated. Okay. Now, other important uh, thing what this can do, the phosphorylated E1F alpha do is transcription factor ATF4, the production of this is also increased. Now, this increased production results in activation of various genes and these are stress response genes. Now let us see what are these stress response genes and what are their function. Their function is basically to facilitate the ability of the cell to repair by itself. Okay. Now what are these stress response genes? They are the genes which are involved in antioxidant response. They are the genes which are involved in protein folding. They are the ones which detoxify free radicals by means of antioxidant response. They are the ones which are responsible for folding of proteins properly. Okay. Now, another important thing is that ATFR, they, it also triggers autophagy and it decides whether the cell should survive or should go for apoptosis. That is what is the role of stress response genes. Okay. Now, why do we need to know about integrated stress response? What are the outcomes of integrated stress response? Which basically tells whether the cells survive or whether the cells go for homeostasis, which means whether the cells repair and does it recover, right? Or whether the cell goes for apoptosis. If the damage is too much, then it will go for apoptosis. So whenever the body has, whenever we all have the faulty integrated stress response, it is linked to various diseases, including cancers, autoimmune diseases, type 2 diabetes and various age related neurodegenerative diseases. So that is the importance of knowing integrated stress response. Okay, with this we have learnt a very uh, interesting topic in uh, cellular adaptation that is integrated stress response. In the next session, I'll be discussing another important topic in pathology. Till then, stay tuned. Bye-bye.